Hi, I'm T. Barney, and I'd like to show you how we made a six foot tall bronze sculpture from a two foot tall stone sculpture that I had carved. We had the sculpture scanned, 3D scanned, and then that scan was sent to a computer that controls a free access robotic arm that milled out the pattern in large pieces of foam. Once that was accomplished, we put the foam pieces together, interlocking, and then proceeded to uh, skin the foam with Bondo and a secret sauce so that then we could sand it smooth and be able to make a mold to make waxes from this foam pattern. The, the Bondo had to be sanded really smooth so that the surface of the waxes that we're going to make from the mold are very smooth and don't need a lot of touch up. Once we got it nice and smooth, it was time to take it to the foundry where we would consult with the mold maker and decided that it was going to be molded in 28 different sections and cut in the cut the pattern up and then the mold is uh, silicon rubber with a plaster um, uh, hard mold around that so it keeps the silicon rubber stiff now these 28 sections <coughs> were brought back from the mold maker to the foundry and we started to put wax in and out of the sections of the mold so that we get a thin skin, a 3 8 thick skin um, of the pattern. And then that, those waxes will then get treated and invested in ceramic shell, which then is what we pour the hot bronze into. Ceramic shell is a refractory material that can scan high heat. And we start melting bronze at 1800 degrees and pour it into those ceramic shell molds that we were playing with. The crucible holds 300 pounds of bronze, and for this sculpture that eventually weighed 900 pounds, we had to pour six crucibles, six 300 pound crucibles. Once the bronze is cast, then it's time to start sanding and grinding on each section of the bronze, and then also to figure out what size pin uh, we would need to mount the sculpture on. Then the sections are welded together, and ground and sanded down and then the larger sections are then assembled into a rig that we actually had to build and again grinding welding grinding and sanding until the whole sculpture was together and then we fillet welded the, the seams and with more grinding and sanding we eventually got a very clean bronze that was ready for patina. And the patina is the oxidation of the surface of the metal in a direction of color by a chemical reaction. And here is the base coat for the patina. And now you can see the turquoise overlay patina on top of the base coat. And we have a sapphire six foot tall Circo sculpture. Now it's time to bring it back to the studio and mount it. We get to drive on the highway and through the town to uh, show the sculpture in the back of the truck to all the onlookers and we got lots of waves and lots of questions of what the heck is that?
We actually had to consult with an engineer on the size of the pin and the size of the base so that when it is mounted on the base, it is very stable. So here's the finished 900 pound sculpture, six feet tall, on its pedestal, and you can turn it with one finger. Thank you very much.